Okay, here's a quick explanation about how to fit a parabola to a picture from the real world. I have this picture that I have copied and pasted into GeoGebra, and I think most people have figured out how to do that already. This is a picture of the Open Door Church on University Boulevard, which looks like it's got a big parabola on it. Um, but among the things you want to do when you get your picture in on a Chromebook, you'll hold down the Alt key and click, and that will bring up this submenu where you can go to settings. The problem is you can't see the grid behind the picture. And so if I go to settings and choose color, then for a picture, that's the opacity, the degree to which you can see through it. If I move that slider to the left, the picture fades. So I need to pick a place where I can see the features in the picture, but also the graph, the coordinate grid behind it. Now, having gotten that, I'll zoom in and out as I need to, which you can use two fingers on your Chromebook um, touchpad to do that. Or you can go up here and zoom in and zoom out using the graphics view. I'm going to choose to zoom in and zoom out with the touchpad like this. Now, I want to move this just so I can keep the numbers pretty in such a way that I get whole number coordinates for my x-intercepts. I'm looking at this inside arch, the inside curve here. It's a little bit cleaner curve. And I want to move it to where I can see it on the coordinate axis where it meets in two points. So if I make one of those points four, so over here, I just need to move it up and down until I can get another the other side to hit on a whole number. And so that looks like 4 and 14 over there on the right is probably a good candidate. So um, a little bit of tweaking back and forth. Tweaking, not twerking. And that looks good. I can zoom in and see how close I've gotten. Um, so for instance, over here, that looks like a pretty good fit at the four. And if I go over to the right, that's a little bit off on the 14. So I'm going to move that just a little bit, but I'm probably being way too picky here. So we're going to call that good. So now I'm going to alt click on this and lock the picture so that the picture can't be drug anymore. And I'm going to go up here to the point menu and choose point and put a point at the x-intercept at 4, 0 and at 14, 0. Notice that those show up over here as the points C and D on the algebra window at the left. Now, I also want to get the vertex. The vertex is going to be halfway between 4 and 14. The number that's halfway between those two is at 9. I can get that by taking 14 plus 4, which is 18, divide that by 2 and get 9. So if I put the point over here in the entry menu on the far left, parentheses, 9 comma 0, and close parentheses, that puts a point E at that place to get my axis of symmetry, which is a vertical line through that point, I need to come over here to the perpendicular constructor menu thingy over here and choose perpendicular line. And I want it to be perpendicular to the x-axis, so if I click on the x-axis, and then I move the line over and click on the point E. Now I have a line that runs up the middle of my parabola and should hit it at the vertex. Um, so zooming in and moving as necessary, I can come in here and plot a point using the point menu right here at the vertex. Now, I have the vertex, which I can read off over here at 7 point, all right, 9 comma 7.31. Um, I might get a little bit better results in the end if I have more decimal places. I can do that by going over here to the hamburger menu and coming down to settings and changing my decimal places. I'm going to put it at 4. And you see over here that now I have my 
intercept or my vertex at 9 and then at 7.3106. And that number I'll use when it comes time to do computations. I also just made the font a little bigger here so that if you're watching this on video, you can see it a little better. Now if I zoom out, what I need to do is come up with the equation of this parabola. And so to come up with the equation, I'm going to recall that I have x-intercepts at 4 and 0 and 14, 0. And I've got a vertex at 9, comma 7.3106. And I'll move over to Smartboard and continue So moving over to the Smartboard, as I whoops, switch to the Smartboard app, I have a vertex of 9 and 7.3106. intercepts at 4, 0, and 14, 0. I can get an equation using either factored form or um, vertex form. So to do it in vertex form, down the equation y equals a times x minus the x coordinate of the vertex, vertex which is 9, plus the y coordinate of the vertex. Because that's how you write an equation in vertex form. And then I plug into that equation one of the x-intercepts. I'm going to take the second one, 14, 0. Sorry, I left the square term off there. And so when x is equal to 14 and y is equal to 0, that point has to satisfy the equation I'm trying to build because that point is on the parabola I'm trying to build. So when I put in 0 for y, that will give me a times 14 minus 9 squared plus 7.3106. And solving this equation, this is 0 is equal to a times 14 minus 9, which is 5 squared plus 7.3106. So the right-hand side is 25a plus 7.3106, and that's equal to 0. I subtract 7.3106 from both sides, and what I get is 25 times the value of a I'm looking for, is equal to negative 7.3106, and so my A is negative 7.3106 over 25. Now, I can um, divide that out and get a decimal value for it, or I can just plug it in as is in GeoGebra. And so for those of you who like decimals, This turns out to be um, about the same as negative 0 0.2924. Uh, and so in vertex form, my equation is y equals negative 0 0.2924 times x minus 9 squared. Um, plus 7.3106. And if I want to put that, or when I put that into GeoGebra, I come over here to the input menu and click on that and type in y equals negative uh, 0 0.2924 times parentheses, uh, x minus the x-coordinate of the vertex, x minus 9, close parentheses. Um, I square that, 
and add 7.3106, the y coordinate of the vertex. And what I get is now a parabola, which just to make it shine for you, I will um, come over here and make it turn red. So to do that, I alt click on the parabola equation in the algebra window, click on settings, go to color, and there's a nice red parabola that fits the data. Now, that's one way to do it. I can also come up with it using the exact same information in the other form, which is the form that we would have what we call the factored form. And so to do that, I'm going to um, erase everything I've got here, and we'll just start over. So for factored form, that's going to look at it like this. It's y equals some scale parameter a times x minus the x-intercept and x minus the other x-intercept. And I need to, again, find a. This time I use the vertex. And so to use the vertex, I know that the point 9,7.3106 is on the curve. So if I put 7.3106, that's going to be A times 9 minus 4 times 9 minus 14. So this turns out to be 5. This turns out to be negative 5. And so what we get is negative 25 times A is equal to 7.3106. And dividing by negative 25, surprise, surprise, the value of A is negative 7.3106 over 25, which we already saw is negative 0 0.2924. So my parabola is going to be Y equals negative 0 0.2924 times x minus 4 times x minus 14. And when I put that into GeoGebra, that's going to take me back to the input menu. And I type in y equals negative uh, 0 0.2924 times x minus 4 times x minus 14. And if you watch what happens as I hit enter, now I have a black parabola that is the factored form, and it is exactly the same in this case as the red parabola. There's the red one, there's the black one. Red, vertex form, black, factored form. Turn on the black one and then the red one. And that, in a nutshell, is how I could fit a model once I know where the x-intercepts and the vertex uh, lie.